What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and if you're a new subscriber here, welcome to the Dirty Max Jack YouTube channel. This is my 2020 Denali Duramax HD that I've had for about a month and a half in my possession. We've already done some modifications to it and other fun things and so far I'm really enjoying it. If you're new to this channel, I have a whole bunch of Duramaxes and we do a whole bunch of diesel things and today we are going to be talking about the 10 speed Allison transmission that's in these new trucks but specifically on how it does towing. Today is my first time towing with the truck and I'm going to share my first impressions with all of you. It should be a good day. I've been extremely interested to see how this transmission feels power wise and just shifting in general wise in tow haul with the turbo brake, the engine brake and all the other features that it offers compared to my 2015 LML Duramax that has some modifications but has been a phenomenal tow rig. Today we're going to be towing around my 25 foot gooseneck both unloaded and loaded as we are actually going to be picking up my race truck today, my 700 horsepower single cab LLY Duramax that I broke the other day as we were doing some pretty ferocious burnouts in Mexico. It's a fun time. Luckily, that truck is now done. So what a better opportunity. Now, if you're new to the channel or you're a returning subscriber, I'm giving away that truck. And one of you guys is going to be taking it home. Entering is as easy as grabbing yourself your favorite product or product through the first link in the description below. All the information on how to get entered can be found there. And that sweepstakes ends September 3rd, 2019. So if you want to get a chance to win that fully loaded LTZ 2015 LML Duramax, Coco Dune interior color match, lift kit, American forces, and everything you see there, except for the trailer I'm keeping that, then I would definitely consider checking out that first link below. Because before you know it, that giveaway is going to be gone and gone forever. Plus, that's my baby. That is the truck right there that started this YouTube channel. A lot of history, a lot of sentimental value. It's going to be an emotional day. So first things first, we got to do another first start feeling. Love those early detail lights. They are so nice. <laughs> Oh, now that's the sound we like. All right, it's time to get this thing disconnected. In three, two, well, that was easy. All right, it's time to get the 2020 hooked up. So I've really been looking forward to this day as it will be the first time that I hook up this truck to my white trailer. As you guys can see, I really like white trucks. Not to state the obvious, my other truck that we're picking up is also white, but it should be pretty cool because we have an automatic tailgate drop feature right here. Plus we have the backup camera perspective. So we've got the bed view, which should be very convenient to do exactly that. Now, before we do that, I also picked up a brandy spanking new BMW OEM ball hitch and chain shackle kit that we will toss in. This truck is equipped with the OEM fifth wheel and gooseneck prep package. So it comes with these little plastic covers on the cleats and on the center ball hitch itself. BMW makes a really nice kit where it's got a handle. So when you grease everything, you don't have to get it all over yourself. Get it latched just like that. And then it's got two cleats. Spin to install. One, two. I'm ready to rock and roll. My OCD is killing me right now. And of course, I have to put this up just to try that button on the inside. This is really neat because for anybody that has a gooseneck or does any towing, which I'm sure a lot of you probably do, which is why you're watching this video, I'm thinking this is going to make the process kind of easy, but it's going to be kind of weird because I'm so accustomed to just looking back naturally. Generally, what I've done in the past is I just look right at that center bed line on the tailgate and use that as my measuring point. So I'll probably still do that and then use this to just line up the neck on the ball. That way I don't have to jump out a million times to make sure we're lined up because although even the most experienced sometimes have to double check themselves. Throw it in park, tailgate button. <laughs> this is crazy. Now I may have to crank the trailer up a little bit because these trucks are extremely tall. So I'm going to go do that real quick. First time's a charm. Those are super nice. It's gonna have to stay there for the time being, I suppose. Keep an eye on it through our camera here just to make sure it's all good. Ugh. And voila, been waiting to see this for a while now and I love it. I was actually considering going a different color truck, but I'm so happy that I didn't. There's just something about an all white rig that just really does it for me. I don't know about you guys, but definitely for me, it's definitely doing it. And I'm also happy to see that they have the shorter bed rails on these trucks because they sit so much higher. This truck is leveled with 22 by 14s. Those are 33 tall tires by 14 wide tires and we're running them with full turn on a level. This truck leveled sits as high as the giveaway LML that has a five and a half inch lift on it, which is pretty miraculous. But what they did with the added height is they actually decreased the size of the bed rails. So there's adequate clearance between the neck of the gooseneck trailer and of course the bottom of the bed. That's probably a good eight inches. I do have the neck extended just a little bit, but trailer's sitting pretty level. So we're ready to rock and roll. And it does kind of look like it's going to rain today. So if it does start, I do apologize in advance for any rain noise. Kind of hard to 
control that when you're a vlogger. Trailer brakes connected. So this is not gonna be like a really in-depth technical review. Rather, this is gonna be just like real life, candid, honest review of somebody that uses their trailer for this specific towing purpose. We're not gonna be out here towing 35,500 pounds as advertised. Well, A, because we don't have a single cab dually, which is the only truck that can do that from GM, but they do that for claim the fame and kind of bragging rights. They measure up, if you will. And we won't be climbing up any Colorado grades. Rather, this is gonna be a review, an honest review of a use case that I think a lot of you can actually relate to. Now to start, my trailer is a 14 GN Big Tex. It's a 20 plus five, so 25 foot in total. It weighs about 4,800 pounds. It's rated at 15,900 GBW. And the truck that we'll be picking up today is a single cab LLY Duramax that weighs in on the scales, fully loaded with me in it at about 6,600 pounds. So in total, we're gonna be looking at about 11,000 pounds. I consider that a good number for the average user. You're gonna have instances where you're towing like 15,000 pounds, maybe a little bit more with bigger gooseneck trailers or fifth wheels, etc. But this should be enough to just get the conversation going. And really, I'm going to be weighing it against what my experience is with the Allison A1000, which is in the 2015 LML Duramax I'm giving away, compared to the 10L1000. That is the brand new transmission for 2020 in the newly redesigned 2020 Duramax HD for 2020. A lot of 2020s there. So tow hauls over here now. Go ahead and click that over. Tow haul indication. Then we've got our exhaust brake here rather than over there, which is nice. It's a little bit closer. And uh, yeah, it is kind of weird to not have the button here. It's still something that I got to get used to. Rear cost traffic alert is off. Park assist off because the trailer's connected. Got a few different camera angles. Got our left side, right side. And I do not have any of the accessory cameras connected. I don't have them yet, but we will be in future videos programming a camera that's permanently mounted on my trailer so I can see behind the trailer when backing up. So that'll be pretty cool. We're all connected there. Good to go. Let's see some other angles here. Front, back. It's a pretty cool angle. Just make sure everything is looking good. Above, can't even see the neck of the gooseneck. 360, man, that's kind of distorted and weird. Wheels, front, back, all right. And we're off. And that is one of the only downsides is these camera packages when driving only last for eight seconds. So far, just pulling out of the neighborhood, guys, initial impressions, it doesn't even feel like there's anything behind me, to be completely honest. Some of my assumptions going into today's experience are that the gearing ratios in the new 10 speed have already made a dramatic difference in the overall feel just driving driving feel unloaded of this truck. Quick comment on the 10 speed that I'll follow up in another video on, especially including like fuel economy and stuff like that, is that this transmission is very decisive. It knows where it needs to be at any given point in time. When you step into the throttle and go to accelerate, it downshifts into its desired gear. It's not like it's guessing around. Just wanted to knock out one of those quick misnomer assumptions that people have been talking about in the rumor mills online. So we got trailer brake here. I have not set that, but we'll put a little bit of gain. We don't need too much. Brakes on this truck are colossal. So it's not like we have to overcompensate too much here. But again, like just towing, you know, 4,800 pounds, call it 5,000 to round up. To be honest with you guys, it doesn't even feel like it's back there. And similar is to be said about my 2015 LML, but with the gearing ratios in the Allison A1000, it is a little bit more luggy. You kind of have to work more of the bottom of the motor, depend on the turbo more. Whereas the L5P makes 945 foot-pounds of torque, it has the ability to lock up in first gear and apply all 900 foot-pounds in first gear, which is pretty miraculous. Plus, the gearing ratios in and of themselves make a big change. My wife and I just bought a 2019 JL Jeep. Same goes for that compared to the JK that has the five-speed. The new eight-speed in those Jeeps make that Pentastar V6 feel a lot more powerful than it actually is on paper. Visibility is really good in this truck too, by the way. A lot of people on the controversial mirror do say, ah, well, you know, they're not all that good, but from a functionality perspective, form, in my opinion, not that bad, but functionality, they work really, really well. They've got great visibility on either side and they are not extended. They're currently in their retracted position. Trans is downshifting really nice, just coming to a stop from 35 miles an hour, first gear. I mean, you barely even know that anything is behind you. If you didn't look in your rear view, honestly, guys, you wouldn't be able to tell. Suspension wise, this thing does not feel plush or as if it's like floating at all. I mean, it is a three quarter ton truck. You probably wouldn't anticipate that, but it's super smooth. And I am towing with 22 by 14s. I am on an E-rated tire. So they are 10 ply. They're a good solid tire to do that. I towed on 14 wides on my old truck for 
I don't know, call about 15,000 miles, and that thing did absolutely outstanding. So it kind of knocks out that small little assumption in this space too to say that you can't tow with wide wheels because you definitely can. Throw that turn signal on, you can get a left side perspective on the trailer, which is pretty cool. And emerge out here, man, it's smooth. Goes to my point earlier, you barely even know that it's behind you. And the truck has so much stability, it's just absurd. I really like that perspective. If you see the right side here, see what you're looking at, utilizing the cameras on the mirrors that everybody hates so much. And then if you go to the left, same thing. It gives you nice clarity in your blind spot, which is really cool because the mirrors actually have blind spot detection, but that feature is turned off when you're towing, obviously, because the length of the vehicle is significantly longer. But to be able to have that is added confidence when you go to turn or merge into another lane. But the good old look back method is always safe as well, but it's nice because you have your normal mirror, your blind spot mirror, and now your third eye, which is right here in the cameras. Definitely one of the huge perks of technology. So here we are right now. If I go into manual mode, it'll downshift in the seventh gear at 80 miles an hour that puts me at 2600 rpms if i shift up in the 10th we're doing 80 miles an hour with a 5,000 pound trailer that we don't even know is behind us at 1500 rpms no joke that is absurd now i believe seventh gear is the one-to-one -one ratio gear where the motor and the transmission are spinning in sync should be interesting to see how that does ascending a steep grade unfortunately here in pennsylvania where i live i don't have too many of those readily available within a local proximity of my house but one day we'll be able to hit it up on a grade with a load on the back see how it does especially on our way to the track for instance so if you're looking forward to more duramax content or diesel content in general definitely tap that subscribe button it's great to have any new viewers along and well my og subscribers you, you know i love you guys tune back into a camera angle here looks like everything is good on the back side handle still facing forward all cleats are in get a little road perspective here that's cool i do really like this bed view because i generally put cargo in the bed when i'm driving i do hope hope that an aftermarket company does come out with the ability to stop this little countdown though just so you could leave this active at any given point in time same thing goes for the front and the rear perspective just to make sure everything looks good wouldn't so much mind having that on at any given point in time but manufacturers probably have to keep that off just for safety purpose short sweet and to the point and i do really want to just briefly emphasize how smooth this transmission is if anybody's heard anything they've rumored that it's smooth but boys i will tell you what it is extremely smooth out of my personal personal experience with all Allison transmissions, whether it be the five speed or the six speed and pretty much any generation Duramax, the six speed in the Ford six, seven power stroke or a 48 or a 68 from the Dodge perspective, this transmission is by far the smoothest. Allison's in general kind of have that reputation of streamlined shifts, smooth transitions between gears and et cetera but this is taking smooth to an entirely new level. I mean, driving it without a load, you can tell, but man, with a load, even more so. It's not like it's kind of jittering between shifts. Anybody that tows knows exactly what I'm talking about. And it's honestly very, very remarkable. Now we have just pulled up to Diesel Works in Mountain Joy, Pennsylvania, where you can see my single cab that we're gonna be picking up, AKA the Minimax. It was over here because it ruptured some fuel lines and HVAC stuff, but they got it all squared away. And boy, it's gonna look amazing here up on the trailer. So. It's turn this thing around and get it loaded up. Looks like we got somebody filming here. Now the parking cleat is way bigger in these trucks compared to the LMLs, although they were very large as well. So this thing shouldn't move around too much, but we do have the parking brake on, which is now electronic. It's kind of weird. I was reaching for the pedal, but there's no pedal. You just kind of press a button. And it was automatically on, meaning that maybe it knows there's a trailer. Well, obviously it knows, but it knows that there's a trailer behind me. So maybe once you go and park, it automatically applies the parking brake. You guys can reference check me on that one and let me know in the comments below. I wouldn't say it's Cali lean because it's not intentional, more functional squat in my opinion. But a uh, set of airbags probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Now one cool thing is this truck does remember that you have a trailer connected, which is pretty neat. I think it has to do something with the fact that the electronics are still connected. The exhaust brake, as a matter of fact though, did not stay on, but I wouldn't say it's the end of the world. We do have a little bit of a uh, oh, Lancaster County lean. Parking brake automatically released, which was kind of cool. Tire monitor system's freaking out, but just gotta get them flashed. Rear park assist off, okay. Thanks for the warnings. Make sure everything's good to go on the bed. First towing impressions for the first time ever with a load on the 2020 and it feels really light. First gear handles 100% of the torque that's put out, 945 foot pounds of torque. Wow, that's really impressive. It almost feels exactly like it felt without the Minimax on it. Again, the truck weighs about 6,500 pounds. 
That is really nice. So that's the big thing when it comes to different gear ratios in a transmission, which obviously this has compared to the six speed because it has 10 gears. It's almost kind of like a placebo effect where you can take the same horsepower and torque, but make it feel faster because of how it's delivered. So although it's the same horsepower and torque number from the first generation L5P, the gearing makes it feel substantially different. Don't know what gear we're in. That is one complaint that I have. Be nice if there was like a little gear indicator just to let you know where we are. Once we do like an Edge CTS2, we'll have that capability, but unfortunately we don't here with the uh, OEM screens. Little engine brake, that's pretty strong, works well. So this first gear is pretty stout. See how it does pulling away from the light. I have a feeling it's gonna feel pretty nice. Oh man, it just ups and goes. It feels really good. The big difference most notably is you don't have to wait for the turbo. It's not like you're depending on the turbo as much as you would otherwise with a longer gear. It winds out a lot faster. The gear ratio is a lot taller. So it's almost like that big sprocket on your old bicycle. When you were in the first gear, you could pedal all you want, but you'd literally only go a mile an hour. Kind of a similar comparison, if you will. Whereas in my LML, first gear is a little longer, a little bit of a smaller gear on the wheel, if you will, and definitely depends more on uh, what provides the power, AKA the turbo in this instance. So here we go, we're jumping on the highway, going under an accelerated condition, and we are off to the races. Wow, just like that, we're up to 70 miles an hour, and that was really effortless. Didn't mash the truck all the way to the floor, felt like it was a little unnecessary to get up to the speed of 65 miles an hour, but you guys can see now we're up to 75, and it was easy. I mean, now we are in 10th gear, confirmed, because we're actually, we're in ninth gear, sorry. We're at 70 miles an hour, 1600 RPMs roughly. Wow. Wow, it feels great. Step into the throttle a little bit as if I was gonna pull out and power just instantly delivers. Shifted down twice there, which was really something. It was kind of like boom, boom. So it's not like it is indecisive by any means. It knows where it needs to go based on how much throttle you're applying. With no load on the truck, it's really, really responsive. But I'll tell you what, it is a way different feel than any other Duramax I've towed in. And it's very, very obvious. Get our perspective on our turn here. That is super cool. I love it. Wheel is not shaking at all very stable this truck feels stout super quiet on the inside which is nice this guy's trying to move over hopefully he doesn't i think we're big enough to where he can see but boys we are cruising and it feels great just downshifted there into the accelerator a little bit it's really got a gear for every occasion that's kind of how it feels it's kind of like when you have that right pair of shoes for whatever instance that you've got going on i'm going to compare it to that it really knows where it needs to be at any given point in time that is super cool that is an awesome feature brakes are super good on the trailer i did increase my assist just a little Little bit we got a gain of 4.0 uh, you can see my brake position is kind of scooting across the screen there brakes are massive on this truck so it really wouldn't be too concerned about that but it feels good it's not like I feel like I'm crushing the brake pedal like I would be on older trucks that's for sure stepping back into the throttle and it just gets right up to speed now in regards to the engine brake, it is braking, but these trucks are so quiet that you really kind of have a hard time tell. You kind of need to go by feel. You might see a downshift. Probably not right now though, because we're kind of on like a bumpy grade going up and down, climbing this little mountain. Oh man, no, that's totally not a mountain. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that grade was just easy. So far, I am super impressed, to be honest. I can't really think of any flaws up until this point in time. Rather, this is just a way better experience in general compared to that old six speed. I'm having a hard time thinking of anything that I would complain about. Shifts are not hard at all. Very smooth, just as smooth as we are without a load. And to be honest, I am super excited about more long road trips when towing with this truck because it just feels so good. And you don't feel like you're bouncing all over the place. Then again, a gooseneck does help that and alleviate some of that, but it's great. I'm happy with it. Just a little bit of lean, if I do say so myself. And I'd say that if you're considering buying one of these trucks to tow, and it's gonna be a three quarter ton, definitely do airbags. I have them on my 2015 and they have been phenomenal. I do plan on doing airbags. Well, obviously now, I didn't know if I would have had to or not, but seeing how much this thing's squatting in the rear, it's probably a good idea. That way you're not just overstressing things in the rear. And plus ride quality improves dramatically. Although this rides really well, when you throw a set of airbags on a truck, it feels very plush in the rear, as if you're riding on air. Surprise, surprise, imagine that. But I'd say overall in this not so technical, not very comprehensive, but somewhat comprehensive review, I'm super happy with this 10 speed. And if you're kind of caught up on trying to consider the 10 speed, whether or not it's okay, if there's birthing defects, if it's gonna be indecisive, it's really none of those. I can't attest to the birthing defects per se because I haven't had it long enough yet, but I will be using it. And if I do run into any issues, I will be reporting them. That's kind of the whole reason that we got the truck is to go through it from top to bottom. So at this point, I'm gonna wrap up the video. I 
do need to unload the Minimax, get that home, get the trailer unhooked, get that home, and get into the whole fleet management system. So, with that said, if you guys haven't grabbed some entries for the 2015, but you want to win that truck, you definitely have to pull the trigger on that. Just imagine, guys, one hat, one t-shirt, some key tags, decal might make all the difference in the world. Just look at the first three winners. They grabbed themselves something and they ended up leaving with the truck, and well, one of you is going to be leaving with, honestly, arguably one of the most iconic trucks that there is on the history of this channel to date. And there's only about two weeks left in that giveaway before it's gone and gone forever. So my procrastinators, I know you guys are out there. Just, just think about it. It might be you. My like legal, love you guys. Do you the best. Tap that subscribe button on your way out. I'll see you all in the next one.